Father, tonight we declare that we love you. Tonight we declare that we believe in you. Tonight we declare that Jesus will be glorified in this place. Tonight we declare that you are Lord over this city, over this church, and in this place. Be glorified tonight. Bless your people. Let everyone who has come here tonight and the many who are following online, let none leave the way they came. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Larry, thank you. Such an honor. Please be seated. Amen. The Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. And we have come again to feast on his light, to feast upon his wisdom because it is in his light that we see light. Hallelujah. We began a teaching in the morning that I'd like to wrap up before we just head for the ministration. The laws of spiritual power. Please do well to listen to the teachings from yesterday night, very brief session, and then this morning. But I, I began to discuss three laws that control spiritual power in this kingdom number one we looked at the law of spiritual illumination that it is as far as your eyes can see your perception light your sight is a product of the light like you have eyes but you need a headlamp in the night and the headlamp of your car the brighter it is the more your vision is that true and that our possibilities in this kingdom depend on the level of spiritual enlightenment that we have and it was a call for us to pay attention to knowledge specific knowledge knowledge that reveals the full counsel of god it is important for us to explore by the spirit and through knowledge the vast possibilities that are contained in the Christ so that we do not limit him based on our perception. It is true that God can do all things, but we must walk with the Holy Spirit and the word to know how far all things can be so that we can then believe. Is that true? Hallelujah. Number two, we looked at the law of submission. According to James chapter 4 and verse 7, it says to submit yourself before the mighty hand of God and then it says to resist the devil from that standpoint of submission and he assures you that he will flee Matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 the encounter with Jesus and the centurion he said for I am a man under authority and I can say to one with the consciousness of the authority that I'm under go and he will go come and he will come do this and he will do that and so he said, Jesus, you need not come to my house. Speak the word only. Because those who are under authority reign with their words. Speak and your servant will be healed. And one of the synoptic accounts said, Jesus told him, go. And that self same hour, the child was healed. Hallelujah. The last of the three laws, very important. The law of faith. The law of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Three spiritual laws that control the flow of power in this kingdom. The first being the law of spiritual illumination. The word of God. Number two, submission. The authority of the kingdom. That your strength is derived from your submission. And may I remind us that the hallmark of submission in this kingdom is when you lose the ability to say no to God. If you still have the privilege and the luxury of negating what you know God desires for you to do, you are not truly submissive because it's proof that you do not trust him. The Bible says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. The way of the Lord always leads to rest. 
the way of the Lord always brings you to your Sabbath. It may not look like it, but the way of the Lord always leads to rest. Number three, the law of faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Paul is speaking and he says, but without faith, without faith means outside of the realm of faith. It is not possible. There is no possibility to please God. He says, for he that cometh to God must come believing two rules number one that he exists you first have to believe that he's not an idol that he is god and he's alive he is number two that he is the rewarder that means you must have at the back of your mind that your pursuit and your coming to god has value all wise do you know why because the bible says blessed is the man who god causes to approach him you have to understand that there is a labor dimension to seeking god so he gives you an information so you do not feel cheated seeking god for a long time will make you look like a fool he says remember he's a rewarder let that understanding give you the staying power while you seek him for many years people will go ahead of you while you seek him for many years he will interrupt so many things in your life but every time the devil wants to use your passion to make you feel that you have missed out in life you are reminded by this truth that he is the rewarder not them that carelessly seek him them that diligently seek him he pays attention to the attitude too are we together faith is very important in this kingdom if you want to receive from God you have to understand the law of faith and there are two dimensions to this law that I would want to discuss as far as the administration of the power of God is concerned I'm not necessarily teaching it as that that doctrine I want to open you up to the law of faith as regards the transmission of God's power now listen there is only one instance recorded in scripture where jesus remember let me make reference to yesterday night and then even this morning remember our standard and our benchmark our definition of spiritual power based on scripture genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 that for you to be said to have spiritual power the highest level and the highest manifestation of spiritual power recorded in scripture is the capacity to say and to see it happen and that what happens is good don't forget that no matter what you have and you show to be power if you do not have the ability to use words to create realities that are good you have not gotten to that reference so this is what we aim at in this conference that god will bring us to a point where we can say and then it happens and that what happens is good hallelujah so there are two dimensions to this operation and for everyone jesus met who needed healing who needed restoration everything obeyed him except one scenario that i want us to look at now are you ready mark chapter 6 let's look at the scripture now mark chapter 6 we we'll begin from verse 1. The Bible says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples follow him. Next verse. The Bible says, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands three is this not the carpenter's son now you see you see what what is wrong with these people now after appreciating the power and the wisdom now they are contrasting it is this not the carpenter's son the son of mary the brother of james look at all the descriptions number one the carpenter's son two the son of mary Three, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon. Are these not his sisters here with us? And they were what? 
did the bible said they were happy please look up we are studying something here so jesus is teaching and it was an astonishing session and you would think these people would be happy and say glory be to the name of the lord this is the son of god the bible says they they saw the mighty works and they acknowledged that this was superior wisdom but it led immediately to offense how do you get offended at the mighty manifestation of the power of god how do you get offended at the supremacy of the word of god dispensed through a man this was a possibility now next verse jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor that means every true prophet has alongside that office honor are we together he says but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house verse 5 and he could there do no mighty work save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them jesus was surprised the bible says first three words and he marveled jesus was surprised what manner of people are you that i come in full of the spirit without measure haven't taught you the word of god he saw cases and situations there that were within the jurisdiction of his anointing and grace but he was surprised the people could not be touched he was surprised that means that he said some things that did not happen there were people jesus told them rise up and they did not rise up and the disciples said this is surprising master we do not know you with failure what is going on here jesus had to defend that failure and he said look let me give you an explanation that failure did not come from me it came from a condition that i want to correct the condition was the refusal to discern who was in their midst and the bible called it unbelief unbelief wow unbelief yes sir if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you many of you will find out why you have been around mighty men you have been around god and never get anything you can clap you can sing and celebrate what god is doing in the life of others and then return back as though you did not meet god these people were in the presence of jesus the word of god the son of the living god and the bible says he marveled at their unbelief now their problem started with number one they are acknowledging the fact that he had the wisdom of god or he was a representation of the wisdom of god they didn't argue that number two they did not argue that there were mighty works that were wrought through him and rather than being happy and giving glory to god the bible says they were offended what was the basis of their offense we know you your brothers were in that meeting too so by what means did you evolve to rise above them and they began to question his humanity they downplayed his divinity they downplayed the fact that he was the son of god notice that all who received from jesus did not associate him to any um his his earthly work as it were they connected him either to his divinity or to prophecy for instance thou son of david have mercy on me there was something about the covenant of david it was the covenant of mercy are we together they when they saw him they acknowledged him they called him in fact the woman who said rabboni they called him all these names but you see the names that they called him here the brother of joseph look at his sisters look at his other brothers look at his relative did you know that of all the people related to jesus the only person who benefited from him in fullness was his mother you read your bible and see that the relatives of jesus never truly benefited from his ministry they hung around and wasted three and a half years and did not get anything but his mother submitted to his teaching 
until she received the Holy Ghost too. You would think because she was the one who carried the word, that was enough basis for pride. But she said, no, 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 no. I know what the angel told me. And even though I played a major role, the only woman on earth who had the privilege of carrying the word. Do you know what it means to carry the word bodily for nine months? You should be proud forever. Snap your womb, sell it, patent every kind of thing. And here is a woman who can look past that and say, you are not my son. No, I will not be deceived. You are the king of kings. My womb only gave you a body. I submit to your teachings as usual. When Jesus was teaching, she was not listening as his mother. She was listening as a disciple. And she qualified right to receive the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you this? The law of faith demands, listen carefully. The law of faith demands that both the vessel who would be used by God and the recipient of that grace both of them have faith roles to play and i want to define it for you now if you believe what i am teaching you some of you even without the prayer beginning you would see that certain miracles will begin to happen in your life on the part of the vessel here is what you need to believe number one you need to believe in jesus christ just because you are the vessel that he's using if you do not believe him then you will never truly be able to walk in the miraculous you will not be able to command the power of god you must believe the bible says that he exists that he is are we together number two you must believe in the fact that by the election of grace he has chosen you to be a dispenser of his power now please listen to me if you believe in jesus as the mighty miracle worker you believe in him as the son of the living god and you do not believe in yourself as the privileged vessel he will use the power of god will not flow there are two levels of believing as far as the vessel is concerned you must believe in jesus but you must believe in yourself not as a human being you must believe in yourself as the vessel privileged by god to be used to bless his people There are many people who do not believe God can use them. There are many people who do not believe that they can be vessels. I have met so many people, even preachers, who truly do not believe that the power of God can flow through them. And Satan will cash in on that mediocrity that sometimes we think is humility. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus himself, the epitome of humility, got to a point where he acknowledged he said before your father abraham was i am it is not pride to acknowledge the fact that the grace of god has found you are we together now and while the devil dangles all the explanations before you why you think you cannot be used and anointed by god and why you cannot become a conduit of his power you rest in the fact that his love and his mercy has found you this is very important very simple understanding but it is powerful every time i stand to minister before god's people i believe in jesus but i believe in myself not just as a nigerian believing i'm a nigerian does not let the power of god flow i believe that by the election of grace and by the privilege not the making of myself that he has so called me by that privilege and allowed me to be a conduit of his power this i believe i believe it in the morning i believe it in the afternoon i believe it everywhere i am the son of god i believe it that i am an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom i am not just a man of god preaching a sermon no i believe i am an envoy it is not pride what you believe is what flows to the people are we together now you have to believe this whilst you are seated there you have to believe that you are the one god has raised to be an answer to your family you are the one that his power will flow through you know once you say that all kinds of things will come to discourage you you have to move them and say lord i believe i don't know how you will help my own belief but i believe you can use me There are times that I'm invited for meetings and when I get there, 
I just look at the people and I look at their hunger, thousands of people. And even though these people love Jesus, they are happy when I come because they believe that God sent me. But the question is, do I believe he sent me? Don't let your congregation believe you more than you. Do not allow those who need you believe in your being sent more than you, the vessel. Are we together? Look at the confidence of Elisha. He said, let the king come so that he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. He was not just bragging. Who else was there? That I believe that you have to write the things you believe about yourself under God as touching the dispensing of his power. I believe that his power resides within me. I believe that I am a communicator of divine realities. You must believe this. I believe that situations and circumstances over the lives of people will bow when you come representing his purposes in their midst. This is what I believe. When I stepped into this place with your dear pastor, I didn't just come to sit down hoping you will be blessed. That is a risk. I know you will be blessed. Believe me. <laughs> I know you will be healed. I know you will be delivered. I know for some of you, you are, you, are, you are waving those challenges for one last time. I know it. It is the truth. Forgive me if it sounds like pride, but I'll be lying if I tell you I do not believe this. I do not believe that anyone will meet me once and actually go back the same. I don't believe it. Truly speaking, truly speaking, if I actually meet you and your life remains the same, I will go on a retreat. I will have to search. If he's backsliding, let God help me. This is what I believe. Nobody met Jesus twice to be blessed. They only met him more than once for the continuity of their lifting, the continuity of their understanding. It matters. Man of God, listen to me. You so we, we come from backgrounds where we live among people who downplay the investment of the spirit in our lives some of them are well-meaning people i'm teaching you something about the law of faith here the average person in africa the average person looking at me now has more people closer to you who do not believe you than those who believe you is that true it is it is a challenge as a continent and even as a nation that it seems like the closer people are to you the more they are aware of your humanity we played together when moses came and stood before his half brother who had now become the pharaoh of egypt you know they were brothers they played while they were small the father had died now Ramesses was pharaoh and he came and met him and said thus said the lord god <laughs> he laughed and said my stupid brother who has been at the backside of the mountain for a long time you come and you meet me with the awareness of the wizardry in egypt and you dare to say i should let god's people go moses said i'm not here to negotiate with you let the rod keep doing the speaking and he said i'm ashamed this is what you brought the god who sent you brought a snake from a rod janus and jambers please come and remind this man that he was once in Egypt. Can I tell you this? The first thing you really have to overcome is not demons. Is to overcome the negative voices that are around you who when God begins to call you and they see you praying, the day they invite you in one small fellowship to lead prayer, where are you coming from? From a little prayer meeting? You? God does not know what to do with vessels again and he's fine and you feel stupid whereas God is showing you that you are going to the nations this is this is listen to me this is very important these guys in Mark chapter 6 look at the sarcasm that they brought before Jesus you would think because he was the son of the living God he was immune to sarcasm that was a sarcastic statement who is this guy? You guys call him a miracle worker. You call him a wonder walking God. You call him this and that. That is your business. We know him. These are his relatives. Imagine that they see people. Imagine what they would have felt during the triumphant entry. 
who is on a donkey going to where jesus the son of the living god what did he say he was the ancient of days he said he was in heaven don't mind that liar he's an arrogant young man who has younger brothers and yet they came to for the meeting and sat down and listened to him while other people were crying under the influence of his doctrine other people were watching and saying well okay i think i'm impressed but it still doesn't change anything he's still the same person in every congregation in every city in every family you will find people who god is sending you to but they may never be able to receive you will try and pray for them you will fast over their issue and find out that you are always powerless in their midst the moment you are among them you don't feel divine again because there is something about their sense of familiarity they are so aware of your humanity that it is difficult for that power to flow through you this is what happened to jesus and can i tell you after many years of living in such a negative environment it is possible that you can come to the conclusion that could it really be that these people are right hmm. so god has created a strategy and usually not all the time but what god does with people like this is he will take you out of your environment for a very long time and and allow you to have the requisite level of motivation that builds you when he now begins to announce you and it is too late to doubt what you carry he can bring you back now as a savior this is what is happening to some of you because if god keeps you in your family right now number one they may not even allow you serve god to this degree number two they can't understand your passion you may not know how to begin to help that lady please you may not know how to begin to explain it to them this is true many people today who have this clarion call of greatness they have been limited because they are in the midst of people who are used to them we saw you when you were born they say we were there during your naming ceremony but he's calling me to be a prophet what prophet not you maybe a stranger so god allocates strangers to come and bless them while he takes you and builds you in an environment that can respect what he's doing in your life some of you probably came to portaco for nyse and god just trapped you here he said no going back just stay because if you go back you are going to add seven years of pain your environment is not conducive for the kind of anointing I need to put upon your life and you can be roaming around port Harcourt with nothing exactly to do and he says look it is about the environment as harsh as egypt was moses would never be able to grow effectively if he was in any other place the greatest persecution would not have been pharaoh's persecution his own people would have killed him How many pastors continue to bleed because when they are with with their congregations that familiarity lift up your hands and they watch them they say please and then they leave their churches and go somewhere where people can appreciate the investment of god's grace and then they are seeing the gifts of the spirit flow and the man himself is surprised i never knew i could walk in the world of knowledge because there was such a a pungent atmosphere this is what they did are you learning something tonight believe what i'm teaching you because it is truth that jesus the son of the living god the word of god was surprised that he could not do anything he prayed for a few people they could not receive and yet they wanted to receive the law of faith every vessel that will be used by god has the assignment to conquer the limitation of your territory not listen 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 let me balance it here you don't have to go around fighting those who don't believe you that's not your assignment are we together now god did not give you the assignment of fighting those who didn't believe you many people who do not believe you are not evil people it is just the limitation of their perception 
so let god know how to introduce you to them in power and glory but as for you you must sustain the psychological strength to rise past the negative perceptions you can step into a place and feel the negative energy if you come as a brother or a sister they will receive you if you come as a classmate they will receive you if you come as a civil servant who worked for five years in a bank they will receive you but don't you dare come in the name of the lord so believe in jesus and you must believe in the fact that he has made you a vessel i am grateful to god for helping my mind i don't know what he did to me to have brought me to this place but i will die believing in jesus and i also die believing that he has made me a vessel